He's our number one seed. And if he can earn the second point, then that will seal the deal and he will have gone coast to coast. But he's uh, he's not done yet. He's nowhere near done. I mean, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done on this model for him to be able to come across that finish line with the correct answer. Meanwhile, Gray on the left also struggling a bit with this feature, trying to figure out what needs to be done to get this feature into the correct shape. You know, one of the most common questions people ask in the world of 3D CAD is, how can I get better at 3D modeling? And the most common answer that people give is, go around your house and model up some real world parts. And so in today's CAD vs. CAD battle, we're gonna see this part here. It's a table, it's got a sheet metal tabletop, it's got these tubes for legs here. One of the legs is kind of bent up so that it goes over top of the other leg. And really, this is the best way to get better at 3D CAD. Find some stuff around the house and start 3D modeling it, and you'll start learning how to create different types of geometry. Well, fortunately, we've created a website, twotalltoby.com, where you can practice modeling over 200 challenges. A lot of them come from the real world. A lot of them will challenge you to come up with solutions to this type of geometry. And of course, if you get stuck along the way, you can always take a look at our tutorials. So I hope that you guys enjoy this battle. It's some really cool geometry. We're here in the finals. Matav is up by one. If he wins this one, then he takes home the entire championship. So let's see what happens. And as always, let me know down in the comments what you thought about this battle and what you think about this model. All right, guys. Well, that was very, very exciting. That was not an easy model. We're getting back a little bit more to the traditional models here. And if Matab can win this one, he will be our champion. If Gray can win this one, then we're going to go to a third battle. And I think I know what everybody's rooting for. We're all rooting for that third battle. So good luck. I'm going to give this thing a shuffle. Shuffle, 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 and spin. And let's see. I think there's one person who doesn't want a third match, and it might be Matab, but I'm just throwing that out there. That's what I'm thinking as well. Right. And so we're going to go to a very, very good model, very good choice here. This CAD vs. CAD battle for possibly the championship. Matab has one point. He's our number one seed. Is he going to go coast to coast? He, I don't think he lost a single match. So if he finishes this match, he will have gone coast to coast, not losing a single match, starting in the number one seed, ending with the championship. We're going to see if he can do it. No pressure, Matab. Yeah, our number no one seed from Bangladesh going up against Gray, our number two seed from Russia. These guys are absolute speed modeling wizards. Let's see how they do with this next and possibly final challenge. This CAD vs. CAD championship CAD battle begins in three, two, one. Go! What is the mass of this multi-body part or assembly in XXXX grams? And this one has some Toby notes on it. Wow, yeah. guys. Good luck. Take a screen capture so you can follow these wizards. It's multi-material, multi-body. It's got all kinds of features in it. It is the perfect challenge for our championship. Good luck to our runners. And wow, 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 this is gonna be a good one. And here we go. We're gonna flip over to our CAD vs. CAD screen here, and we're gonna see how these guys attack this thing. I mean, I think just looking at this thing myself, I would probably do this thing in a few different phases. Maybe one of the phases would be the legs. One of the phases would be the tabletop. Uh, you can see that this does come from a physical model. Once again, a physical model. So we do have a physical table here. Uh, looking at things in the real world and figuring out how to model them is always a good skill. And uh, you can see the leg. Nice. The, one of the legs has to kind of bend up to get over the other leg to get out of the way. So we're killing it. We're killing it today with physical models that we can actually see. So yeah. I just want to give us our, ourselves a pat on the back for that. Uh, that's It's the best way to learn. <laughs> the best way to learn yep. is by modeling things that are actually in the real world. Victor K in the chat says, this looks awesome. I wish I was competing. So very interesting. Two different modelers, both using SolidWorks, but starting in very different places. Gray, mm -hmm. opting to start with the table itself. It looks like he's going to create what we call a revolve, where Matab looks like he's going to jump jump into the legs right away. He's going to begin modeling these legs right away. So the legs are created from tubes, hollow tubes that have an 18 millimeter diameter. So you can see that's why he's doing nine millimeters per side, creating some offsets. And then he's going to go in and create that double dimension to the point of tangency. Meanwhile, you can see that 
Uh, Gray has taken first blood, creating our first solid geometry in the form of this table. And now Gray is going to go and try to create some additional geometry on this table here. Looks like he's going to be creating this kind of like a almost like a plus sign on the bottom mm -hmm. of this table. And so we'll see how he handles this feature. You can see that on the left, Matab is, looks like he's planning out to create a sweep path, but he's created some offset geometry to help with defining the dimensions for that sweep path. And that is a fantastic approach uh definitely toby approved i do that a lot i'm going to create a sweep i'll just offset some geometry because i want to sweep along the center line uh but you know I, I end up getting uh some dimensions maybe that go outside to outside so it's good to learn how to use that offset geometry absolutely and you see gray over on the other side you know he's he had the i think he looked it looks like he put in a uh he doubled the diameter instead of doubling the radius when he put that that in and I, that's one of the things my my students do all the time. They mm -hmm. type the wrong number, and they're like, "Oh, I, I just got to be double." But it's you definitely tripped them up with some of these measurements. On oh this yeah, one. But for sure. Being able to see that visual change kind of kind of helps things. So and gray, you know, and, and without giving away too much, I just wanted to say I think gray maybe just ran into a little gotcha there on the print. And, uh, and I'm not going to say any more than that, but if you guys are out there looking at the print and you look at what Gray just did, you'll understand what I mean. Uh, this is definitely, this is one that I was really hoping would come up in the tournament uh, because yep. it does have some gotchas in it. And, uh, you know, and that this, again, these are the types of things that sometimes happen in the real world. You have to create parts so that they work together. Uh, and and so, in this, you'd almost, would, I feel like in the real world, you'd have this as like three prints, mm -hmm. but we don't have 15 screens to be able to keep YouTube and our chat and, 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 right? So it, it kind of gets lost in some of the measurements. Yes, so. exactly. Yeah, it's it's when you have the luxury of having larger sheets of paper or having more, you know, more room for your for your details and things like that. You can the the prints look a little bit less sloppy, but yeah. this one looks real not sloppy, but just very uh, very cluttered, um, very informative, very informative. There's we'll a lot of information in this print. Exactly, yeah. a lot of information in a small space. So very cool here to see Matab once again imploring that uh, offset geometry. Matab on the left using SolidWorks, using that offset geometry to kind of help him map out uh, the diameter of those tubes. Uh, they are hollow tubes, of course. You can see that in section view CC on the print. If you guys have the screen capture of the print or if you roll back and you look at it again. Uh, Matab now creating that geometry for that second tube. He's already got that first tube in place. Very impressive. And now he's creating the geometry for that second tube. The curved tube that has to go up and over the table. It looks like that tube is blue on our isometric uh, rendering of the table here mm -hmm. that we've got center screen. And we see gray on the right coming up with the geometry for that first tube. We call that one the flat tube. The flat tube just kind of runs up and over. And it looks like he ran that right up into the table. We like that as well. Bringing that right up there to the table. That looks like that should... Should work out for him. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, I know you definitely do. We had a we have an ag teacher Facebook group, and we were talking about some stuff. And I feel like when you're shopping in the store, you see things. You're like, I could totally model that. <laughs> like I do that all the time. I buy little toys and stuff at the store. But in our ag teacher group the other day, a lot of welding teachers um, over summer, some of them went to some theme parks. And they're like, never look at welds when you're at a theme park. Like we all are judging it like crazy. And then all the wives started chiming in and they're like, oh my God, you can't take this guy anywhere. Disneyland yeah, is funny. horrible when you talk. Yeah. So it's definitely, you surround yourself with your work, but if it's something you like, it's, it's amazing and it's fun. So, yeah. And so Matab here, looks like he's now got both of those tubes. He got that tricky one that has the bend on it and uh, he got that flat tube as well. So he's got both of the tubes kind of up and in place where he wants them. A great foundation here now for him to be able to create the, his next set of geometry. Now we'll see what he does next if he jumps right to the tabletop or if he, he how he decides to do this. I know that when Gray did that tabletop, he used a, a different feature. Again, I'm trying to kind of throttle back everything that I'm saying here because I know that the runners... <laughs> Could he could be listening in, um, and now we see Gray uh, re going back to that earlier feature that he uh, that he was was almost stuck upon. Right, he he got to that uh, that section of the model and realized, oh no, that I can't, I don't know where to 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 place this, and so now he's able to place that. So Gray going back and trying to get that geometry in place looks like he's doing a great job with that sketch using some mirroring functionality with that sketch. Mm -hmm. Matab here looks like he's opting to create a reference geometry plane there, and now he's going to sketch upon that plane. Oh, interesting yeah, approach here. Oh, Sketching yeah. it as a solid, extruding it, and 
what's he gonna do with this tabletop? He's in preview mode. He's thinking through it a little bit. Uh huh. I like it. Gonna add the draft in the extrude. Wow. Matab, very nice. We like that. And meanwhile, Gray, you can see, has moved on to that, that feature on the underside of the table. It looks like now Matab looks like he's got uh, what I'm going to assume there is probably three separate bodies. Gray looks like, on the other hand, he's got two separate bodies. So you could say Matab is ahead as far as number of bodies. But you can also see here that Gray uh, has uh, has done a really nice job here. Look at him using, what is that, Intersect to to cut those apart. Very nice. Yeah. Wow. I was... like I like the technique Matab did too. He uh, did a quick measurement and then just changed his measurement in the uh, uh, the starting sketch by that much. Did a real quick math problem and then had it go. And you know, a lot of times that's how you troubleshoot. And I don't know why this isn't working, but okay, that's how I delete those. Yeah, exactly. Right? And Matab coming in there with a shell to shell that thing off, and now it looks like he's going to opt to fill it off these edges here to get that full round on the top of the table. Very nice. Very, very nice. I really like the, the use of that uh, that workflow. I thought his workflow was fantastic there. Yeah, Jern in the chat saying, this seems a bit difficult for uh, Tier 5. But again, you know, we've talked about the tier levels multiple times, and it's it's about the features. It's how many features are in that feature tree. and Yes, exactly. Yeah, it definitely was right on the cusp, uh, right between a tier five and a tier six. Mm -hmm. um, it was uh, it was something that I wasn't really sure which which one I was going to settle upon, but uh, decided to go with a, a tier five. But it's it's right there on the cusp between a tier five and a tier six journey. Yeah, um, it could definitely you know it's it's complexity, not difficulty. So as far as just like the sheer number of features required you would consider this a tier five, but if we were, you know, if we were to factor in maybe a little bit of a complexity uh, modifier, we could probably get this up to be a tier six. Yeah, no. And again, like it's difficulty. It's, you know, it's probably not hard for the guy who made this table to do this time and time again. It's what he does every single day. So right. just like we see gray with sheet metal and, exactly. you know, certain people are better at certain things because that's what they do all the time. <laughs> Aaron C recognizing so many little things to keep track of here. I bet it's very likely we see a wrong answer or two. Yeah, exactly. It's a great place. There's no shade thrown. No, I, I think they understand. There's just a lot yeah. going on in this drawing. That is for sure. Vicky Chong saying, is this the model you were hoping they would get? Yes, this is indeed the model I was hoping they would get. This one, I, I had to spend a lot of time getting it, uh, massaging it. You know, a, a big part of the magic in this tournament is trying to come up with models that are going to give us a good show um, and that are going to challenge these guys. And, you know, if you want to earn the championship, I think this is a, a fantastic model to earn the championship yeah. on to show that you've got what it takes. You can see that both of our runners now are at the point where this plus, if you, if you notice this plus symbol that's on the bottom of the of the table that Matab is working on and that, that uh, uh, Gray is working on as well, in order to get that plus in place, you have to reference the legs. And so that's what kind of makes this model a little bit tricky. And so there's a few different views on the drawing that are showing uh, that information uh, as far as like where that plus needs to be. And so I think that's what both of our runners now are struggling to, uh, to, to come to grips with is like, what the heck, what's going on with this plus sign? So it's very cool to see them both working on it at this point. And we're going to see kind of what they come up with as far as how to get those, uh, how to match that spec on the drawing. And it looks like Matab's figuring it out. I think yes, he's, indeed. he's getting there. Yeah. Yes, indeed. We'll see. Oh, <laughs> it's 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 one of those you go back and forth and you keep trying to figure out how to do it. And wait, did I check this? Did I do that? Yeah. So yeah I can definitely you, feel the nerves. You think you got it. And then you go back and you look at the print and you're like, wait a second. I'm not sure I if forget. that's. Yeah. yeah. Something's still off here. And so this is truly a perfect model here for what could be the final uh, the final battle in this tournament. Matab has one point. He's our number one seed. And if he can earn the second point, then that will seal the deal and he will have gone coast to coast. But he's uh, he's not done yet. He's nowhere near done. I mean, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done on this model for him to be able to come across that finish line with the correct answer. Meanwhile, Gray on the left also struggling a bit with this feature, trying to figure out what needs to be done to get this feature into the correct shape. But... Uh, uh, definitely using some tools that we're not used to seeing. It looks like maybe that's like a split command or an intersect command where he's using the, the one part to split the other part or to intersect with the other part. I think he's using, I can't tell if that's a split or an intersect, but yeah. I think I just think because he's getting that um, template window to show up, I believe that shows up when you launch a split command. Gotcha. 
Yeah, Aaron C. saying it's uh, guess and check might go pretty far for this model. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Victor K. saying it looks like a split as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I, I saw PB in the chat said, I, I saw one video and now Cat Esports has all of my interests. I know it, it'll happen. You catch the bug <laughs> and your whole timeline becomes Toby. And it's 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 a good problem to have. So. Well, thank you. Thank you. And yep. thank you for, for joining us here today. Thank you to everyone yeah. for joining us here today. Looks like we are at, let's see where we're at for our likes here. We're trying to get to 133 likes. We're at 114. If we can get to 133, then we will do a special episode of Model Monday Live this Monday. And uh, thank you all so much for tuning in and for joining us. Over 200 people watching at times on this live stream. Gray nice. coming in with an answer. Four, two, six, five grams. And that is not correct. That is not correct with intolerance. So Gray coming in with an answer needs to, uh, needs to go through and maybe double check what's going on with his geometry uh, to try to figure out where uh, that, that, incorrect answer is coming in but we do have our very first answer here in the chat gray coming in four two six five grams and uh it looks like he has he has noticed something that uh that he doesn't like it looks like he kind of jumped right into it wow this is exciting so he kind of jumped right into it he saw something that he he didn't like it looks like he's trying to modify something um and you guys in the chat who are watching along with this is truly a spectator sport at this point uh, because you guys have the 2D print from earlier in the live stream. And Oscar IN is here and says, hello, hello. You came in at just the right moment. This is very, very exciting. And Gray looks like he is considering firing his second bullet here. Gray comes in with an answer. Four, two, four, five grams. And that is correct. There we go. And wow, Gray. <laughs> Well done, my friend. Earning his first point in this championship match. You All gotta nothing, just go yep. for it there. You gotta <laughs> fire away there at the end. You can answer twice incorrectly. Gray said, I'm going for it. I'm firing in my second bullet. And wow, 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 Gray. That was awesome. Well done, my friend. Well earned. Three matches. The dream is alive. Gray, that was so awesome. Matab, excellent battle as well as always. And we are going to a third battle here between these guys. Corey, what did you think about that? Yeah, no, I could see. I felt like I was in Gray's head a little bit. It was like, I'm either going to get it or I'm not. So I'm going to, I already got one answer. Just, I think this is right. I fixed it, right? Like, I'm just going to send go it. Forward.